What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our Connect 4 series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch those videos and then come right back. In case you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1, 2 and 3. In which case, let's get on with programming our game and let's get into the check winner function. So now you want to click on the controller sprite and uh, first I'm going to clean up all my code. And as you can see, I've scrolled right to the bottom where I have this change move uh, message which I receive and do a few things. So what I'm going to do right after we set the um, turn to be either Q or we set the turn to be P is to have a function. And uh, the function I'm going to have is going to be called check winner. And this is obviously going to check whether that player has won or not. So what I'm going to do is to have uh, check winner uh, broadcasted right there. And you can see we have a defined check winner, which I'm going to do below. So I want to put that in both of these uh, turns so that we check the uh, we check if the player has won both uh, for player one and player two when they make their respective turns. Now, obviously, after we check um, uh, the check winner function for player Q, we do not need to check it for P because if P had won, then he would have won on the previous move itself. So now let's get into the main check winner function. So just like the earlier function where we had the move. Uh, function being basically a um, basically a product of three functions. We are going to have the check winner function as a product of four functions. So the four functions are just going to be win followed by one, then win two, or uh, win three, and so on. So um, as of now, I'm just going to declare those uh, four functions first. So now win one. This is going to be win two. Now I'm going to declare a win three, and finally I'm going to declare a win four. And uh, once you're done with those four wins, all you have to do is to head over to the check winner function. And I'm going to declutter my code a little bit by just moving these things on the side. And now what I'm going to do is to put those four wins within the check winner function. And uh, we will be changing all of this uh, in the next few videos because this is going to make your Connect4 game extremely, extremely laggy. And uh, to fix that, we'll be needing to do a whole lot of things which I won't get to right now. As of now, just have this uh, have this in place. So now you can grab this uh, define win one and get it down below. Now you could clean up all your code, but this is going to result in all of it being arranged once again. And uh, I don't really want that to happen. Now once, uh, what we need to do when we define a win one is to make two new variables. And you may think, well, you're the one who said use the same counters because you're gonna save memory and so on. Well, this is what is going to make your program way faster than if we use the same counters and you really want to use different counters for this. So uh, I'm going to have two counters, which is going to be I and uh, then I'm going to have a J. So make sure you set it for this sprite only and uh, make another variable called J. There we are. Perfect. Now, just like all the other variables, I'm going to be hiding them. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. First, I am going to set I to be um, one. Okay. And um, I'm setting it to one and I'll be setting to uh, setting J to be one as well because our coordinates start as one comma one and our win one of our check winner function and I actually made a small mistake so you can uh, cl right click and edit it. But before we get into that, uh, here's what it's going to do. It's going to check if uh, either the uh, either one of the players have won by placing their coins horizontally. And uh, win two is going to check if the player has won by placing them vertically. Win three and win four are going to be checking them diagonally. So uh, as of now, the mistake I was talking about was that we need a parameter so that we know whether we need uh, to check it for win one, uh, for the player one or player two. So just add in a side right there and uh, just click OK. Now you may want to do the same for all of these things, but uh, as of now, I'm just going to have win one as of. Uh, as of now, okay, I'm just gonna have win one with a side. Now, once we set i to be equals to one, now uh, just like our previous counters, I'm gonna grab a repeat until, and uh, within the until's condition, I'm going to say repeat until i is equals to seven. So add in a seven there, and uh, I'll put in an i. Within the loop, I'm going to be setting the variable um, j 
to be uh, one once again and uh, I'm gonna have another repeat until and this is going to make it a nested repeat until. So repeat until and here it's going to be repeat until j is equal to 5 and I'm going to change that 7 to a 5 and just change the i to be j. Now within this I am first going to um, change j by 1 because uh, we need to increment j and uh, that reminds me to also change i by 1 uh, because uh, since this is loop we basically have to constantly increment it but within this I need to have an if then not an if else but an if then and I'm going to uh, make our code smaller so that uh, you guys can see this entire script because this is going to be pretty long. So I'm going to have in an if then and I'm going to scroll um, I'm going to put that j right below it. Now within this I'm going to have um, three and operators which means I'm going to have four elements in that if then statement okay and here's what you need to do. So first you need to say if item of board and uh, head over to variables and grab this block which says item one of board and now you want to change that one to be item number of and you want to change that thing as well but as of this list we're talking about it's going to be board coordinates okay and obviously we are going to be checking not if it's the, uh, if that particular element is vacant but if that particular element is whatever you know player one or player two or in this case uh, p and q and what we're going to have as this thing right here is going to be head over to operators and grab this block of code which says join apple banana and you want to grab another join apple banana and put it in place of banana. Now within apple you want to set it to be i and within the banana you want to set it to be j and you want to change this uh, apple in between to be a comma and this is pretty much all you're going to have okay. Now you will have to make a few changes for the next few things. So I'm going to duplicate this once right now and uh, I am going to scroll this, uh, I'm going to scroll up and put this all the way here, okay, just make sure it's not hitting anything. All right, now I'm going to head over to operators and grab a plus and actually you just need, um, you actually need four of these but you will only need three pluses, okay, not four pluses, sorry if I mentioned earlier. So um, now I'm going to say a uh, j plus one because uh, since we are checking them uh, horizontally, this is going to be um, i6 or uh, uh, yeah i6 uh, j1, this is going to be i6 j2, this is going to be i6 j3 and so on. So now we are going to check this horizontally. So we'll be incrementing j and not i. So now I'm going to say j plus 1, I'm going to duplicate this once more and say j plus 2. Now I'm going to duplicate this once more and say j plus 3 and uh, finally I'm going to duplicate this once more. But actually uh, never mind we just uh, we just want three of these because j is going to be the first one. Uh, I'm also going to fill in each of these ands with an equal to and uh, this is pretty necessary as this is what is going to enable us to have a condition checker. So make sure you have those four equals to set up and oops I just uh, made a small mess up right there and uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to get that equal to block right down and here I'm going to put in the side uh, from not from blocks actually, I'm going to scroll up and grab that side from win and I'm going to put that variable right there, okay. And now what I'm going to do is to put this right inside. So I'm going to put the last element to be 3 just so that our work is a little bit more organized and uh, I'm going to put that within the last and. I'm going to do the same thing, the exact same thing for all of these as well. So I'm going to put in the side for all of these, um, instead of all of these 50s which you can see. And now I am going to get these um, get these gigantic blocks of code and put them where you have those blank spaces. So this may be a bit of shuffling and work and uh, as you can see I'm struggling with it myself but uh, just keep this, uh, try to get this going. Okay, This is going to be a very very important step. So now I'm going to get this and put it right there and once you have that in place that's going to be pretty much it and I do hope I did this correctly. So now if this is the case it means that the particular player won and now what we can do is to just broadcast a message. So I'm going to say broadcast message and even for the message I'm going to use this join right now and what I can do is to just grab a join apple banana and change it to be a join side followed by wins and I'm going to leave a space right there so that we have a neatly indented um, you know in a sentence case um, message being broadcasted. And this is pretty much going to be the win1 function. 
Well, now you may be thinking, well, we have six rows, but why do we have a repeat until j is only equal to five right here? Shouldn't it be j is equal to eight since we have seven columns? And the reason for that is we do not have to check it for every single column as when j eventually reaches four, which is still when this loop is going to happen. As soon as j is five, this is going to exit the loop. Uh, as soon as j is equals to four, that by itself is automatically going to ensure that this entire row is checked. So we do not have to go through every single column to actually check whether the row has, you know, four coins of the same type in it. I do hope that makes sense. And uh, we will be applying a very, very similar thing to, uh, to the win2 function as well. So once you're done with the win1 function, now you can get into the win2 function, which is now going to be checking the, um, uh, checking if there is a winner vertically and not horizontally. So I'm going to grab the win2 and edit it just like we did it for win1 and I'm going to change that input to be side and then click OK. Now very very similar stuff to win1 uh, but we're going to have a few differences. So now what I'm going to do is to make um, two more variables okay and this is going to be we had ij so we'll have k and l. So now once again we'll set it for the sprite only and uh, I'm going to now set a variable called L and uh, set it for the sprite only as well. Now you can um, remove those two from uh, showing in the state since we don't really need them. And what you can do is actually just duplicate this entire um, function. And now what you can do is to make a few modifications. First of all, we are going to be setting K uh, uh, to be one and then we will be setting L to be one inside the loop. Now, unlike the um, previous function, uh, here we're going to have repeat until uh, L or uh, actually K I think yeah repeat until K is not equal to 7 but 8 because we have 7 columns and uh, this is going to ensure that we exit this loop when K is equal to 8. Now what I'm going to do is to scroll down below and uh, I'm going to change this J to be um, uh, L I think yeah change it to be L and uh, I'm going to repeat only till that is 4. Because thinking about it, as soon as we have the third column, which has that particular coin, it automatically means that all the columns below it will have to be filled with the coin. And if you're in the um, fourth column, there is really no point in checking because it's impossible to win since there are only two more columns below it. So now you want to change these two variables as well to be the correct one. So I'm going to set this to be L and uh, this one to be K. Perfect. Now I have to change all of these variables. So I'm going to set this to be K and obviously these are, I'm getting a bit confused with these variables, but just stay tuned. Now what I can do is to change this first of all to be a K and this as an L, but now I am going to change this. I'm going to make the X, um, you know, the coordinates in the X axis. Now the counter is K and L, but I'm going to make K to be plus one and I'm going to put in L just like that. Now I'm going to scroll to my right once again and do the exact same thing. I'm going to change this to be a K and I'm going to put that in spy instead of a J. Uh, and I'm going to put the plus two right there and I'm going to change uh, the J to be an L. Now what I'm going to do is to change this I to be a, a K and I'm going to change the J to be an L. And once again, I'm going to change these two um, things a bit. So I'm going to put the K in spy uh, where the L was and I'm going to put the K back to where it was but this time with the plus 3 operator and this is pretty much it. This will ensure that you have a, a win2 function that is going to check if the win is happening horizontally regardless of the player since we have a parameter which we can specify at the time of the execution of this function. And that's pretty much it. I know this was a pretty short video and you probably expect it more, but stay tuned because we are just a few more steps away. So for example, we just have the win3 and win4 functions before we get into speeding up the program and finally the end screens. So we will be finishing off connect4 in I believe one or two more parts maximum. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.